that unwelcome guest everyone wishes would just leave already? That's COVID-19. That's why I got the new updated booster designed to help protect against recent Omicron variants. Got it. That was Martha Stewart serving as a spokesperson for Pfizer as the pharma giant plans to bring its COVID-19 vaccine to the commercial market later this year. The pharmaceutical giant was instrumental in the vaccine rollout in the earlier days of the pandemic, but as the government buys less and less of the COVID vaccine, Pfizer expects to lose billions in revenue. According to CNBC News, Pfizer reported a whopping $100 billion in revenue in 2022, with sales from the COVID-19 vaccine and Paxlovid, an oral antiviral, making up more than half of that amount. Despite the record profit, Pfizer is anticipating a dramatic decrease in profits. COVID vaccine sales are expected to be slashed by 64% soon. Not a surprise as demand for the vaccine wanes. Slashed just like Martha Stewart's pineapple. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, you picked up on something uh, when we had played this before we started. Mm -hmm. Did you want to tell the audience what you noticed yeah, in her well, language there? She describes the booster as having been designed uh, to uh, be more effective against the new variants. Whether or not it was designed to be more effective against the new variants and whether it is, in fact, more effective against the new variants has been a matter of a lot of dispute that we've talked about on this show. So it does seem to be like some kind of shifty, right. shifty language There's there. There's a genuine scientific debate over how much better, if better at all, the bivalent performs if it up against the new variants compared to just any old booster and so on and so forth. You know, there are there are valid questions about how much additional protection someone who's already had COVID or someone who's vaccinated uh, with the initial shot is getting with further and further shots. Of course, Pfizer has incentive to sell more and more shots because it's going to be charging them now on the commercial market. Although I assume most if you have health care coverage, you're going to be able to get that covered by healthcare, not everybody has it. Mostly, of course, and but, yeah, not everybody has it. But here, so here, I don't think people will be generally paying the sticker price for this. The, the, the framing of this is kind of wild to me, on a lot of different for a lot of different reasons. For one, this uh, you know revenue is dropping, like like if this is an urgent kind of economic crisis that the public should be invested in. No, these pharmaceutical companies saw an, a boon in profits because of their relationship with the government and providing for these vaccines, getting liability shields, um, having the government contracts to buy all of this. And now it's going away. Biden has said the pandemic is over. He's given us a pullout date, uh, mission accomplished for, what was it, May 11th? Mm -hmm. um, and so they are apparently more abruptly than the pharmaceutical companies anticipated ending these contracts. So the pharmaceutical companies are upset Oh because, no, the emergency <laughs> is over. <laughs> well, the pharmaceutical companies are upset because they, one, they have to distribute all of the vaccines that the government's already paid for, before it can then start charging people, um, apparently somewhere between $110 and $130 per dose for uh, additional vaccines. And as they point out in all these articles, the, the demand is, is waning a great deal. And I, it is, I expect it to wane even more when people aren't able to get the vaccine for free, but have to start considering whether or not they're insured and what percentage of it is covered by their insurance and all of the rigmarole that we always have to deal with when talking about the American healthcare system. Right. Uh yeah, it's a weird uh, way of approaching this issue, like, oh, our profits are going down. Like, this was going to be ideally, right, a one-time bonanza in profits for the companies making the vaccines and the antivirals for this emergency, because the goal is not for Pfizer to make a lot of money. The, the, like, right. the social goal is for COVID to be defeated and go away and right. no one die and no one get sick. Uh, again, I, I have no problem with Pfizer profit, profiting along the way to that mission. Um, it, it should be, we have to be cognizant of how much input over actual government policy the people who stand to profit are having. Are things getting required? Are things getting um, immunized from liability, et cetera, et cetera, and so forth? Where's, you know, where's the government funding coming from? What strings are attached to that? Who's advising government health scientists? Are they on the boards of Pfizer and then going on television, i.e. Scott Gottlieb, et cetera? Those are all very valid public policy questions. Uh, I, and Pfizer, a lot of profits, good for them, but you know, we have to. We, the, the goal is to not have to deal with COVID. Anymore. Well, now they're going to turn to us. They 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 got the profit off of our backs indirectly by getting it from the American government, and now that pool of resources is dried up. So they're going back directly to the consumer and pitching us using a 
beloved icons like uh, Martha Stewart to try to convince us to keep paying for something despite there being well, I feel like I'm still very confused. We're going to be safe from, it was a mix, like, she the, was the doing sword a, sharpening. What was the sword? The sword was that a pine? That was a lot, a little big for a pineapple sword, right? There's a such thing as a pineapple sword. Yeah, don't you remember <laughs> season one of the White Lotus? A, a, a dedicated sword for pineapples. Yes, there's a sword for opening a pineapple, uh, for slicing a pineapple. But I don't think what she had there, I believe, was a katana. I, and I, uh, and and that's so now we're mixing metaphors here. Is it like it's like a defense, like a samurai? See, you, but she was in the kitchen. You, I don't know. You were hung up on the sword. I was I was I'm hung, up on, the, hung I, up on the sword. I was hung up on the idea of a woman her age talking about a monthly visitor that won't go away. I, I thought it was going to be a different kind of <laughs> commercial altogether when it first started playing. But 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 regardless, um, <laughs> <laughs> like Alzheimer's or something. No, like know, la saying, lady lady, lady things. I, yes, I, I yes, Robbie. I'm stuff. trying to see. I'm trying to save you after I've gotten us into this All morass. Right. Um, I, the, the one other thing I wanted to say about this is that we have all of this, you know, COVID skepticism that has been the enemy of Democrats since the beginning of this. Mm -hmm. um, and they have made a lot of statements about how important the vaccine is and how we, we you know, we, everyone was supposed to get it because it was going to get us to a certain point of herd immunity. Obviously, we learned more about the science, things change, yada, yada. I, I don't expect everyone to be in the exact same rhetorical place they were in like the summer of 2021. However, it does strike me as an interesting choice heading into an election season where COVID is this battleground to basically concede that COVID isn't important enough for the government to want to fund vaccines. And it still butts, butts against all of this language that was used earlier in the pandemic about how unconscionable it would be for people not to be able to take the precautions against this horrible, deadly virus just because they're too poor to pay. And now the government has to contend with having said things about like that about COVID while suddenly thrusting people back into the wild, wild west of healthcare, just like every other disease. And I will never forget I'm sorry to personalize this, but I'll never forget the vitriol that I got in the April of 2020 when Kamala Harris tweeted, no one should die from COVID because they can't afford health care. And I simply quote tweeted it and said, totes my goats. Also, though, what about diabetes and cancer and heart disease and all the other things that people die from or are sick from because they can't afford health care in this country? In greater numbers than in COVID. In greater numbers <laughs> than in COVID, absolutely. And can't say that. People but. were livid about pointing out the obvious end game of that kind of a statement. So both in, co in the context of COVID and on a broader health care, uh, sorry, Democrats rather have set themselves up as frankly coming off as disingenuous. Was this really about wanting to keep people from COVID? You know, was this really about an investment in people's public health? Or was this about the economy getting, getting things back on track, not losing out on their money and their, their investments? Mm -hmm. and remember Kam Kamala Harris's initial reaction to the idea of COVID vaccines, which was if Donald Trump says to take it, I don't yes. know. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> a very, a very unallowed opinion to have. Uh, thank now, God for the long memories here on Rising, Robbie. I was Googling <laughs> that in between Googling pineapple sword. <laughs> okay, up, update me on the pineapple sword during the break. We'll have more Rising for you right after this. <laughs> 